All right, it's time to see if Brian Johnson's uh, son's blood is going to make him younger. I guess, you know, I, I've been kind of the entire time he's talked so much about Talmadge. Talmadge has made strange appearances here and there. I wonder if this is where we're really going to get to see any of like Talmadge's perspective on this, because I am genuinely curious to know what his son thinks about all of this and like, you know, like what's going on there, right? <laughs> And of course, before we get started, I would like to just bring up, you know, Betteridge's Law of Headlines, which I think is very funny. Essentially, the law is that any headline in the news that ends in a question mark can be just confidently answered by the word no, and you can just move on. If they had evidence, if they had like a real reason to say yes, they wouldn't have presented it as a question you know, making it so that they're not necessarily accountable for whether it's correct or not. They ask these open-ended questions because, you know, like the answer is like, no, or like, maybe. And they just want to imply that it could be yes, right? And so, yeah, like he's got his, will, will my son's blood make me younger? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and say no in advance, but we'll see if he provides any strong evidence in this. Obviously, you know, the idea that you're getting infusions of blood from a younger person, you know, it's been talked about a lot. I don't think there's really any real scientific evidence for it yet. I, you know, don't know if he's going to provide any, but but let's find out. Let's watch the video. Regular transfusions of the blood of a younger, physically fit donor can significantly retard the aging process. So, I, to start off, I think it's very funny that he started with the Silicon Valley parody of this from the TV show Silicon Valley. That's incredible. And then he's going straight into the fear mongering from, from mainstream media as well. You know, great start. Love this for you, Brian. The vampire going insane. Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. He calls himself the world's most measured human. He's spending $2 million a year on a team of 30 doctors. To reverse aging. Whoa. Skill issue. I You could just pay one doctor. You don't have to pay 30, you know, like... Clearly, you have trouble figuring out how many doctors you need, right? They called out the bomb squad. They brought the dog. Wow. He had, he had some shoulders there, actually. That was good for you, Brian. Congrats, Brian. As far as I know, it's the first time this has ever been done. You ever done a multi-generational exchange? Ever. If you start to feel like your eyes start to eat. Sorry, I love that like even the people doing this procedure were just like, no, I don't consent to be in this. I don't want to be in this. I don't want anybody to know that I'm associated with you. Itch. That's the first sign of a, of a reaction. What? Good morning. So again, I love this thing you have to do where you need to be shirtless for camera but you also need to have a mic on you somehow and it always looks very bizarre you always have to tape it to your body or hang it from a necklace or something very silly congrats brian you've done it again the challenging thing is i need to eat this somehow before we get on the airplane <laughs> again brian just struggles to eat his veggies he's just a he's just a big boy he just struggles to eat the veggies that he's said that he has to eat all the time it's so funny at blueprint we have evaluated hundreds of longevity therapies and i thought it would be pretty epic if my son sorry adults should not be using the word epic like this anymore like that word you know we should retire that around like 2010 i think uh, why are you calling something epic brian please don't do that father and i completed the world's first multi-generational plasma exchange Plasma is a part of our blood so when we get our blood drawn we see a bunch of red stuff a part of that is the plasma which can be separated from it and it started with this really wild experiment where two mice were actually sewn together to share the same circulatory system. It was an old mouse and a, and a young mouse. The results showed that the old mouse got younger. The proposal is not that my father and I... So it, to address this, right? Like, yes, we have this experiment that shows that this may work in mice. A big problem that a lot of folks have is taking animal studies and assuming that they're going to extrapolate over to humans when animals and humans are often very different. This is a big problem that people like Jordan Peterson have as well, where Jordan Peterson is like, we should base human behavior off of like lobster, like social patterns or whatever. But like lobsters are so different from humans that it's like, you know, you don't need to even think about it. And we can draw potentially some conclusions from animals that are very similar to humans that have very similar digestive systems and so on. 
even when you're talking about something like a mouse, right? Like the lifespan of a mouse is so different from that of a human. You know, yeah, like maybe this helps mice live a bit longer. Maybe it has little to no effect in humans because humans just live so much longer anyway. We have very different metabolisms and so on. There's this quote that I used to hear a lot that was, you know, like a pro-vegetarian quote where it's like something along the lines of like, you know, oh, people say you can't build any muscle mass or whatever with a vegetarian diet. But then, you know, you look at all these cows and like cows can get so big and so strong just from eating grass all day. And of course, like it's like, yeah, like cows can do that because they can digest fiber in a way that we can't. And that makes their metabolism fundamentally different from ours. And it makes them able to derive much more energy from eating grass. Higher digestive system, their entire metabolic system is set up to work around that. Humans don't have that. We're not like that. So we can't eat the same way as a cow to get big and strong. And so likewise, it's like, hey, you know, this transfusion from mice thing, is it going to help humans? Who knows, right? Like, probably not. But again, like, again, you know, that doesn't mean that there's not nothing there, right? Like, you have something that works in an animal test, you see if it works on humans as well. And again, what we're waiting for is not, like, more animal testing. We're waiting for proper, proper human testing. Not get sewn together. The proposal is that I donate my younger plasma to- <laughs> I also, love, I also love right here that he's like, just to be clear, I am not proposing a human centipede between my dad, myself, and my son. Just to be clear, I know that you might have been concerned that that's what I was proposing, but I promise I am not. My father. It's possible that this will help him in a variety of ways. There have been several human trials since the mouse study, but young plasma is still an experimental invasive therapy. Even though we completed a battery of baseline measurements on him, there's some level of risk here. Now what do you think, 10.30? A year ago, I was living with my mom in Virginia, and I had grown up in a religion for all my life, but I'd never really been into it. And a couple years back, my dad actually had left the religion, and he was sort of the outsider kept at bay by my siblings and I because, because he didn't check the religion box, he could not be trusted. I started to develop a relationship with my dad. And we began working on practical things together, like my homework. And slowly I began to develop a trust for him because I saw that in the areas he's helped me in life, he has had a good track record at helping me succeed. And so that sort of bled into other areas of my life. And eventually I came to the conclusion that I wanted to leave the church I grew up in and come out to California to live with a him. And it was the best decision I've made in my life. Okay, so, I mean, that's actually kind of interesting because it kind of frames it as, you know, basically like he's this teenager raised in, you know, potentially a bit of a sheltered lifestyle, sees his father as sort of breaking out of that lifestyle, wants to get out of that lifestyle himself, wants to bond with his father. And that's kind of interesting. I guess it kind of explains a lot about why he's here. I guess it also feels like he's kind of really awkward on camera. And like, you know, it's like maybe he's not necessarily a true believer in all this stuff so much as he's just kind of like, yeah, I just want to hang out with my dad. So I'm just going to, you know, like try it out so that I can hang out with him because I, I respect him and I love him so much, which is which is a I guess a wild position to be in. But uh, yeah, let's see. Let's continue. Hey, how much? <laughs> There's a delay. Hey, how much? Well, so I was updating my algorithm yeah. of the number of cameras on you. That was so weird. That was like the most, that was like the weirdest, most staged. Like, both of these men are extremely awkward, but like, that was so weird. Like, that was not normal. That was not normal parent <laughs> interacting with child interaction. I've been so proud of Talmadge because he's, he has not been on camera at all and Talmadge is learning extraordinarily fast. I'm impressed. Yeah, again, I, I think that's pretty clear. I think he's kind of uncomfortable on camera. Check in self-service. There are so many things that can go wrong. We've planned this entire thing to happen in 24 hours. Not a single thing can go wrong. So I'm pretty nervous about this. I'm actually excited. This is like the first thing where I'm actually having something done to my body significantly that's supposed to help it besides blueprint. Yeah. Do I want your plasma? Like, how's your plasma been? What's the warning label here? For about 16 years of my life. I Sorry, 
that was really wild. He's just like, he's just like, what if I don't even want your shitty plasma? Because you've been, been bad. <laughs> God. Wow, that's so mean. <laughs> You're, you're like you're doing this whole invasive procedure that relies on like your younger son's blood and then you're just kind of like t dunking on him <laughs> i've had unlimited sugar so just be ready for that we're 34,000 feet we're flying christ like that really scared me like this man looks why is he so moisturized looking has he been sweating this whole time like he looks like he's melting Flying to Dallas. We're about an hour into the flight. We just had some food. Yeah, we're gonna go into land. I'm gonna see my dad, which I'm really sad about because I haven't seen him in about a year. We talk a lot on the phone, but I haven't been with him. Talmadge is right behind me. I need to check in to see what he's eating to make sure his plasma's okay. <laughs> again, <laughs> again, he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, my son's back there. I gotta, I gotta make sure he's eating good stuff for me so it doesn't ruin his plasma for me. Oh Christ. This is so weird. This is dad. Wow. <laughs> dad, you look amazing. <laughs> I think that's the first time my son and my father and I have all hugged together. That was a beautiful moment that I will never forget. Yeah. Uh, where do you want? Yeah, go ahead next to Talmadge. Okay, Dad. I get a lot of meanness directed towards me for Project Blueprint. It does something special to just get under people's skins. They seem to just boil and they want to just unleash on me. I do have to confess, I do love it. All right, let's do the- None of us are pressed, Brian. We're just like, you make all these bizarre claims about how you're aging in reverse. You look like you're dying and you don't really back anything up. And then you're like, oh, people just hate me. Like, no, we don't hate you, man. We just think that you're a bit weird and we have valid criticisms <laughs> and you're not addressing them. The first one, I hope he gets hit by a bus. The thing on this though, I wonder what happens if a bus gets hit by me? Maybe he ch What? Okay, so he, he's like, if I get hit by a bus, uh, you know, I'm Spider-Man actually. I could just like, I, I could just do the scene from Spider-Man and just stop the bus. Uh, yeah, that's incredible. Like, and, and that's, and to be fair, that's an extremely legitimate criticism. So you can do basically all this stuff to optimize for your individual health and if you are not actually then you know managing risk factors for all kinds of other risks in your life you could still again be hit by a bus or a car like tomorrow and and die and so you know how can you minimize that risk well you could be somebody who lives somewhere where you know you don't necessarily have to you know drive very much or you don't necessarily have to go or interact with roads very much those are ways that you can reduce those risks. And of course, you know, like that doesn't mean that you want to just be somebody who like stays, you know, cooped up in your house all the time. You never leave, you never go anywhere and never take any risks, etc. But it's about the fact that like, yes, and really underrated, really important factor in health that we don't really think about or consider is that there are a lot of risks associated with your lifestyle that you can manage that we make these trade-offs every single day. We decide, what kinds of risks we accept and what kinds of risks we don't accept. And he's just kind of like, oh yeah, like, you know, well, you know, if if there's this risk that I get hit by a car, uh, whatever, I'm Spider-Man, it's fine. Okay. Chokes on a piece of broccoli or mushroom. This is actually legit. There's, <laughs> there, there's so much irony in life. And if I were to die, it would probably be choking on broccoli. Good comment. So it's, it's really funny that he had like a really legitimate criticism, which is like, hey, you can't protect against accidents, you know, risk factors external to you. Uh, and he was just like, oh, skill issue, I'm Spider-Man, etc. And then he has this, this legitimate risk that he can control, like choking on a piece of food. And he's like, oh, yeah, actually, that's my kryptonite. That would just murder me instantly. That's my Achilles heel. Like... You know, I'm going to choke on a piece of broccoli and that's how I'm going to go. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, bizarre reversal of priorities there, I feel like. 
We arrived at the hotel and the remaining thing we have to do is get pictures. There's only uh, 20 minutes of sunlight left. And also my bedtime is fast approaching and I just- What, what a weird outfit for this sh shoot. It's just like, hey, like what's the, the thing that we all have in common? We can all wear like a white tank top. That's it. It's so bizarre. <laughs> Why have you selected this as your, as your photo shoot outfit? Just don't negotiate with my bedtime, ever. And actually go, physically go. Pull him up, pull him up. Woo! Richard, I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Cool, you look great. Dad, you wanna take center? If you had to summarize, what would you say? You can think about this as things an individual can do to be healthy and well. We typically think about it as an individual doing something, but rarely this intimate of a setting where you're exchanging biofluids in a way that's meaningfully going to impact your, your body. I feel like today that pool experience was like, <laughs> like the, any all complications, the humor, everything that was sand, like everything that went with it. It was just like the culmination of all those factors that made it one of those experiences that were like, shit, that was awesome. Yeah. It, it is. I feel like Talmadge does not get out very much. I feel like he's like, oh, I got to do this cool photo shoot with, with, uh, with my dad and my grandpa, and we got to hang out, and that was awesome. Like, okay, I, yeah, I feel like, I feel like this is more for them, just sort of a family bonding experience than anything. They're just kind of like, what if we had this excuse to hang out, and that would be pretty cool. Like that's what it's been framed as so far. They haven't talked about the science or like anything it's just been sort of this like slice of day in the life documentary about what's going on in their lives and mostly what's been going on is that they're just kind of like hanging out because you know like they've got this this project that brian's doing that sort of brings them all together greatest project is everything that he's throwing christ they just used the word project right after i said that that's so funny okay got it guys Bye. see you pound it <laughs> Yeah. Noggin. That's good enough. <laughs> See ya. I think like, I think Talmadge is just kind of a dork. And I, I mean, Brian's also just kind of a dork, but I think that he's just kind of an awkward dork who wants to hang out with his family. <laughs> Continuing. What? The plasma bus got decorated. Love flows from the heart. I guess it's really the vein, but uh, but this is amazing. That was so weird. Who is that? How old are you? Are you like 15? <laughs> Mentally, not like physically. Hey, good morning. This is Dad. This is Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you? Nice to meet you. Do you say where's the old guy? <laughs> no, Did, is that what he no, said? <laughs> Hey, you ever done a uh, multi-generational exchange? Never. Yeah. So Father Johnson, how are you feeling today? Absolutely spectacular. Did you eat a good breakfast? No, he didn't feed me. He's over there eating the blueprint and he gives me a muffin. So he's <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to bring you some candy bars. Is that Would okay? You? <laughs> You're my new best friend. Thank you. <laughs> I love that he's like, he's like, my son's been starving me. He won't let me eat anything because he doesn't want my, my plasma messed up or whatever. And then immediately, like, the guy whose actual job this is, is like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just give you a candy bar, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that doesn't matter, actually. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, with Talmadge, you know, we, he's been on Blueprint for two years now with me, and we do all of our blood work together. And you're right, like, the, if you look at the results of our blood work, we're almost indistinguishable. I can be a. I mean, again, tell me just like just said not that long ago. This was like the first real like big thing that he was doing for Blueprint, and I, I, I think Brian Johnson being like, my son has been doing Blueprint for two years. It's like I think he's probably been doing the diet, maybe, but that's probably about it. Like I, I don't imagine he's been doing much else. It, it, it feels very inconsistent in his description of it. Part of a Blueprint therapy that would help reverse my age and my dad's age and my grandpa's age all at the same time. And so I was ecstatic to have the opportunity to be part of that. 
Normally this filter is filled with all kinds of junk that your blood has inside of it, but this is completely clean. There's usually something in there, but there's nothing in here. I created this human. He's now almost 18 years old. We're now doing this together. I, I never imagined in my entire life this kind of relationship with my child. I mean, yeah, I couldn't imagine doing this with my kids either. <laughs> yeah, you're right on there, Brian. Thanks for the plasma. No worries. All right, Dad. And there are parallels in my childhood and also Talmadge's childhood. My parents divorced when I was three years old. My father was understood as this ostracized outcast person. He didn't help himself with some of the struggles he had in his life, where as a child, and I'm trying to process who my dad is and what he's doing, and you know, I, this is not a judgment on my father. He had his own, he's had his own life journey, that's fine. Ironically, I lived a similar version with my children. You know, Brian has been a magnificent kid through the problems that I had. He was always the one that would reach out. But, you know, there's still that hurt. And so... I'm sorry, like, this is footage from one of the exercise videos, but why is it the color balance is way off? Like, did they not, did they not take that footage? They've just, like, messed with it or something. Went through where he faced physical symptoms, everything, and his reconciliation. And he had to pull himself apart. And so as he's gone through that process, then he's been able to look at me and say, ah, I get it. You know, it was not an act of cruelty, uh, misjudgment, you know, lack of character. And, uh, and so that has resulted in, in what I see is this kind of unification where we get each other. What does that mean? We, we've not, as, what, wait, what does that mean? He just kind of stands up and all falls over and he goes, don't pull a Talmadge? Does, do we, have we established that like Talmadge falls over a lot or something? Like where, what did you get that from? That doesn't make any sense, like, is that a joke that they like cut out somewhere in the footage? Love you, Dad. Yeah, love you. What a great experience. You feel the love? Yes. All right. Well, today we're at the end of our epic adventure, the, tri the multi-generational plasma exchange. Dad needs to catch his flight, Tom and I, we got a self-story party. Amazing day. Thanks for coming along for the ride with us. See you. Text us, text us when you check in, okay? Look at that stud walking off in the distance. He must feel good with this new plasma. People are going What? Why is this family so weird? Who made this family like this? I'm sorry, I would not be hating on my grandfather. <laughs> there's no there's no situation in which you could get me to do that on camera. I I, I would <laughs> like <laughs> you can you can be like I'm going to torture you and I'd be like all right, I guess I'm getting tortured. <laughs> this trip was remarkable. It honestly exceeded my expectations in every possible way. The multi-generational plasma, it was a first in the world to ever be done. Uh, also, it was an emotional experience for Talmadge, my dad and I. We were able to reconcile. We were divided by the mind and we were unified by our biology. And it was sweet and caring and loving and it was just one of the most beautiful experiences of my entire life. Yeah, so I think that my summary of this is that essentially this is like they filmed like a 15 minute slice of life mini documentary about him hanging out with his family and it's not really about the blood or the, the plasma transfusion at all it's about them hanging out and they're framing it as if it's like this bonding moment between the three generations and you know it's like his son just really wants to hang out with him and he just really wants to reconnect with his dad and he kind of sees, you know, himself and his son. And that's what this is mainly about. It's not actually about the blood transfusion at all. He doesn't, like, provide any evidence for why this ex extremely experimental, completely... He, he says it. Like, it's, it's the first time this has ever been done. So they don't even really know 
what benefit this has, like how much this is going to help, etc. He's just sort of like, I'm going to try out something that's fun and, and like hang out with my family. It gives us an excuse to bond. And it's like, you can just sit down and hang out. You don't have to have this excuse to do it. You could just chill and hang out and be a family. And that would probably be a lot cheaper than flying to Dallas and getting this, you know, strange treatment. So yeah, that's all for this week's video. As always, don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you all next week. Have a good one. Thank you.